Hey guys, welcome back to The Average. If you're new here, you probably don't know that I do some book type of art often because I really love reading and I'm a writer, so I like to incorporate those type of videos into what I do on this channel. So hi if you're new and welcome back if you're old. Not old, but yeah. Well, maybe a roll. I don't know. We're going on a tangent. Anyway, I decided to draw food from books and the first thing I decided to draw was kind of from a classic book and hmm, looking on it, I don't know why I picked what I did because I chose Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and you think, oh Steph, why did you choose some amazing bubblegum that changes flavours or some beautiful chocolate or a chocolate river or something? No, I... I chose cabbage soup and there's a reason for this because I thought it would just be nice to paint soup I guess that's a really really simple reason but anyway I thought what I would do is as I was painting each of the items that I picked I've cho chosen three different food items from books so as I speak about them I'm gonna give a little detailed paragraph on them from the actual book so if you don't know about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory it's it's quite a famous story, you know, the whole Willy Wonka and blah 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 and the chocolate and he gets a golden ticket to go and visit this chocolate factory. But I think what's most interesting about this story and its aspects is that the Charlie Bucket and the Bucket family are very poor, so like you're kind of rooting for him from the start and I really like that part where he's, they're all just down on their luck and, well I don't like it but I find it interesting to read stories about rags to riches, I always find that really inspiring and interesting. So the paragraph of the book says, the only meal they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soup for supper. So I just thought I want to draw something from the beginning where you really get to know the characters and you get to understand why they do what they do and what motivates them and things. I think that food is really important because it contrasts so heavily to all the sweets and luxurious food that they get to eat later on in the in the book. So this is my drawing, I just did simple watercolours for all of these illustrations because I just wanted to try and see what could happen if I could just do just plain watercolours. I do add a little bit of mixed media in later on but most of it is just watercolours and pencils over the top. Um, I had a hard time getting the bowl to be like a round shape, <laughs> a round shape, you know, like not a wonky bowl I guess but it is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and it's Willy Wonka so it's a wonky bowl, get it? I hate myself, I'm sorry. And the next thing that I chose was, so I didn't know if this was a bit of a cheat because I know that this film is also a book and the book is a book that I love, it's Howl's Moving Castle. And I couldn't remember if this scene from the movie was actually in the book, but I took a lot of inspiration from this website that I didn't mention before, it's called Fiction forward slash food.com and they had like a list of different foods from books and then you could click on them and go through to like maybe a picture or a wikipedia article or you know a fan page of the book and it would tell you about the food so it was on that website so it must have been in the book i have read the book it's one of my favorite books to be honest but i just couldn't remember if it was a scene in the film and also a bit in the book but it must be so it's all good i just can't find the paragraph so you're gonna have to use your imaginations here or go watch the movie or read the book yourself if you fancy it. A lot of people actually don't know that Howl's Moon Castle is based on a book, which I find interesting because they are really good books. I really enjoyed the last book in the series as well, The House of Many Ways, where, well, I won't explain it, but you guys can go look up those books if you're interested. They're really light-hearted fantasy and I just think they're like a comforting read if that makes sense. They're just nice, you know? And they're interesting and I just, I feel like the characters, you get so much from them and yeah, it's a great book. So you guys should go check that out if you love the movie. I know I love the movie, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna read these and I was blown away. So there you go. The 
painting turned out quite nice. I really like the way I did this. I think some of the aspects, I think I went a bit too overboard with the blue pencil. But apart from that, I really like the way the eggs and bacon look. I don't eat bacon anymore, but <laughs> it does look tasty. The last thing I picked technically isn't a food item but you know I had to do something from Harry Potter as this is the first time I'm doing this kind of video of choosing foods and I think Harry Potter is such a big influencer for many people especially myself so I had to do something from there but like the first one with the cabbage soup I wanted to do something a little bit outside of the, the box and do something that maybe people don't really remember that much or think about when they think about food from Harry Potter so I could have done butterbeer or the chocolate frogs or Bertie Bott's every flavour beans all those kind of staple things that we think about when we think about Harry Potter but yeah I wanted to do something different and this necessarily isn't food and it probably isn't something that most people in the Harry Potter universe would partake in drinking but it's unicorn blood and I just thought it would be a really cool thing to do because I mean it technically isn't like a drink it's not a potion but it is it's kind of an illegal drink so this is the passage from the book the blood of a unicorn will keep you alive even if you are an inch from death but at a terrible price you will have slain something pure and defenseless to save yourself and you will have have but half a life, a cursed life, from the moment the blood touches your lips. I found that so interesting and I was like I want to draw this and I can do like a really cool bottle style and maybe some fancy liquid inside the bottle and I kind of forgot that unicorn blood is supposed to be silver so I did like kind of a grey colour with a tinge of you know pinks and stuff because when I was researching images for unicorn blood it was all grey or silver so I remembered that now that that's what it looks like in the book and I thought that would just be a really fun thing to draw and I think this is probably one of my favourite illustrations of today and yeah I just really liked it I liked the way that I did the perspective of the bottle and then inside you can see the liquid and you can see where the liquid is meeting the edge of the glass kind of thing and I just really enjoyed it and I think this one yeah is my favourite. And of course, I want to do more of these drawing illustrations. Ones that I missed out on was the White Witch and the Turkish Delight. I was thinking of definitely drawing that, but then I just didn't, it didn't make the cut, guys. And then I was going to do Peter's cheese buns from um, uh, The Hunger Games because he's a baker in the story and stuff. So I thought it, I could do something interesting, like maybe make a cake and things. So I was looking up what famous food is in The Hunger Games and it was just kind of like Peter's cheese buns that he presents to Katniss and I was like yeah I mean maybe maybe in the future I might draw them if you guys want more of these types of videos let me know what your favorite bookish food is and I can have a go at drawing them maybe and yeah okay that's the last one and I think I'm gonna leave it there otherwise I'm probably gonna ruin it so that's the unicorn blood this is Calcifer's breakfast and Charlie and Chocolate Factory's cabbage soup. I don't know what you guys think, which one was your favorite? I'm a bit partial to the breakfast and I think my least favorite is probably the cabbage soup, but there we go. I really enjoyed making the unicorn blood. And yeah, I think they're all quite fun and they're kind of different to how I would usually do stuff. So I think they worked out, but maybe there's like some 
little mistakes on each of them, but I think they're quite quirky in the way that maybe some of the perspective on the circles is quite skewed, but I like them. Let me know which one is your favourite, and if you like this video, um, let me know if you want me to do more of this type of video with bookish stuff, and I know I haven't done them in a while, so it was fun to get back into that. Okay, thanks for watching guys, I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.